Tracy is a real-time nanosecond resolution frame profiler that can be used for remote or embedded telemetry of your application. It can profile both CPU and GPU, and it also can display locks held by threads and their interactions with each other. In this example we will connect to a running game and see what it is doing. You can see the frames rendered by the game and the functions that were called in its threads. Even though this is a live capture, we can inspect the timeline with no problems. The execution times can be measured down to the nanosecond accuracy. Mutexes are displayed on the timeline and can be inspected in detail. In case of lock contention you can see what thread is blocked or is blocking. Shared locks are also supported. The timeline can be navigated using an integrated message list. Typically this would be your debug messages. If you select a message, the timeline will directly go to the place where it was issued. The messages are displayed on the timeline. You can also set a custom text for your functions. In this case we report the file name we are opening. Your application may report numeric values that will be plotted on the timeline. As always, you may zoom in down to the nanosecond level. The values and their changes may be easily inspected. The sawtooth pattern you see is caused by two threads simultaneously sending values to the same plot. This is all done during a live capture. Notice that over a million new data points is added to the plot each second. You can use this feature to track every memory allocation. Even the ones performed before entering the main function. You can inspect the function behavior using the Find Zone menu. Here you will find various timing statistics, along with a histogram of function execution times. Logarithmic time scaling may provide a better view at the values. You may use cumulative time option to display time spent in function, instead of function call counts. Function calls may be grouped by custom user text. Selecting the group will highlight it on the graph. By default groups are presented in order as they appeared. Sorting by count may be more preferable. Function search may find more than one match. You can select the entry you are interested in. You may want to look only at a specific timing range. Here we will select the function calls that took over one millisecond. Each selected function call may be viewed on a list. Clicking on each entry will display more information. Middle click will zoom the timeline on the selected call. The statistics menu shows all function calls sorted by total time spent in function. By call counts. Or by mean time per call. Selecting a function will allow further inspection in the Find Zone menu. Recorded frame times are displayed on the graph above timeline. You can easily see which frames took too long and focus on them. At deep zoom levels the red areas show the overhead due to profiling. The hardware timing and accuracy is indicated by the error bars. Tracy is able to handle huge amounts of data. Here we are navigating a trace with half a billion captured function calls without any problems. Now let's see how you can integrate the profiler into your applications. We will begin by downloading the source code of the ETC pack. This program was never integrated with Tracy. Now we can download the Tracy profiler source code. Adding it as a sub-module allows performing updates to new versions with ease. We will now modify the ETC pack build script. The integration process is as simple as adding a single source file to your application compile list. 
It is very similar in Microsoft Visual Studio, you just need to drop a single source file into your project. By default Tracy is disabled, so that you don't have to worry if you want a clean build. We need to add the Tracy Enable macro to enable profiling. Now let's build the application. In order to capture a profiling trace you will need to use either the visualization application that we looked at earlier, or the command line capture utility. For simplicity, we will use the latter at the time being. Now let's start the capture application and launch the ETC pack executable to see if everything is set up the right way. The capture utility is now waiting for incoming connection. And the profiling trace is successfully captured. You can see that we have received zero zones. This is because there was no instrumentation done, so no function calls were reported. We will now fix that. Let's begin by including the tracy header file. There are also headers for Lua and OpenGL integration. We mark the main function using the zone scoped macro. Its execution will now be reported by the profiler. We do the same for the bitmap loader class. In this case we also want to mark the asynchronous part of the function. We use the named version of the zone scoped macro to set a custom name. Let's also mark the block compression function. This function is called many times from multiple threads. The profiler should be able to show us the parallel execution. Now we will rebuild ETC pack with our changes and see if it is working. Success! We have captured 4 million function calls. Let's open the profile capture and inspect the functions we have instrumented. We can see the main function, the asynchronous bitmap loader, and the 4 million calls to the process RGB function. This concludes the feature presentation of the Tracy profiler. More information on the source code can be found at https://bitbucket.org/wolfpld/tracy.